Hi, my name is Leroy Roundtree Hassell. I serve as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Virginia. Thank you very much for your willingness to participate in Virginia's jury system. America is a great nation, and one of the reasons our country is great is because every citizen enjoys the right to a jury trial. King George's refusal to allow the American colonists to resolve their disputes with an impartial jury was one of the causes of the American Revolutionary War. I hope that you will always cherish your right and our rights as Virginians to a fair and impartial jury trial. Your participation today is necessary to ensure that our fellow Virginians are accorded this fundamental constitutional right. Every citizen, rich or poor, male or female, and of every color, must have the right to a jury trial and the opportunity to serve as jurors. Justice, my friends, demands nothing less. This videotape presentation will help you perform your duties and responsibilities as jurors. The constitutional right to a jury trial is the cornerstone of our legal system. A trial by jury allows people involved in criminal matter, business disputes, or cases alleging the negligence of others the benefit of the judgment of the entire community. Your voice matters in the Virginia justice system. We know you will take the responsibility seriously. The court and the parties to litigation realize jury service may disrupt your daily routine and cause you some inconvenience. If you have a physical ailment, special conflict, or a genuine hardship, please bring this to the court's attention. In some cases, the court may excuse you or defer your service to a later date. You will not be asked to serve more than one term every three years. The jury coordinator will help to familiarize you with the procedures of the court. Generally, trials only last one or two days. However, if you are selected, you may have to serve in a trial that could last several days. We understand it's difficult to take time away from work, but you should realize that by law, you can't be fired or required by your employer to use sick leave or vacation time to make up for the time missed due from work for jury service. Simply notify your employer of your call to serve. In deciding how to dress for court, keep in mind the formality of court proceedings. Clothing that is distracting or offensive or overly casual is not appropriate. When you sign in for jury duty in a majority of courthouses, you may be given a badge to wear at all times while on court premises. This lets everyone in the court know you are an active juror. Even before being selected to sit on a jury, please remain in the jury room or appointed area as you may be called upon at any time. The jury coordinator must know where to find you at all times during your service. And what did you say? Well, the whole back of the car was smashed in. She hit me pretty hard. There are two different types of cases in which you may be asked to serve, a civil case or a criminal case. In a criminal case, in which the defendant faces a misdemeanor charge, seven jurors will be selected to hear the case. A person convicted of a misdemeanor may be fined or sentenced up to 12 months of confinement. Twelve jurors will be selected for a criminal case when the defendant is charged with a felony. A person convicted of a felony offense may be sentenced to pay a fine or to serve jail or prison time or, for certain murder convictions, may be subject to capital punishment. The number of jurors needed in a civil case generally depends on the amount of the damages claimed by the plaintiff. Generally, five or seven jurors will be selected to serve. When it is time for a jury to be selected, the bailiff will escort all potential jurors from the jury room into the courtroom. Let's take a moment now and introduce you to the people who work in the courtroom. All rise. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So it's not command of Virginia Beach Circuit Court. I'm Patricia L. West, I've got some comments on the court. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. A judge presides over every trial. The judge will conduct the case, decide what evidence is allowed, instruct the jury about the law, and hear and decide legal arguments made by attorneys. 
In a criminal case, a prosecuting attorney who represents the state brings the case to trial. In a civil case, a plaintiff, with or without the assistance of counsel, brings the case to court. The defendant in a civil case is the person being sued. In a criminal case, the person charged with a crime is also known as the defendant. His or her counsel is called the defense counsel. The clerk of court maintains the court files and swears in the jury and witnesses. Usually, a court reporter keeps the official record by recording every word spoken during the trial. The bailiff is in the courtroom to keep order, maintain security, and to help the judge or jury as needed. Before the trial begins, a group of potential jurors will be questioned and selected. The clerk or bailiff will ask the potential jurors to stand, raise their right hand, and swear or affirm that they will truthfully answer the questions they are about to be asked. The judge will state the names of the parties, their attorneys, and witnesses involved in the case, and a brief description of the nature of the case. The plaintiff in this case is Cynthia Kroger. Ms. Kroger claims she was injured as a result of the negligence of the defendant, Paul Arillo. In the interest of providing a fair trial, it's extremely important for you, the potential juror, to acknowledge if you know any of the persons identified or if you have any other conflict that will keep you from being fair to both parties in the case. Members of the jury panel, have any of you or your close family members ever been involved in a serious vehicular accident before? If so, would you please raise your hand and identify yourself? The questioning of the jury panel is called voir dire. Voir dire is a method to determine whether a prospective juror can be impartial and is otherwise qualified to serve on a jury. During this questioning process, you may be asked about your occupation and other questions you might consider personal. Usually, questions are asked of the entire panel. At times, an individual may be asked to explain his or her answer. If your answer is embarrassing or too personal to share with everyone else, you can request to speak privately to the attorneys and the judge to explain your response. By questioning the jury panel, the attorneys are able to narrow down the pool of jurors to the people who they think will be able to deliver a fair verdict in the case. There is no limit to the number of prospective jurors the attorneys may ask the court to strike for cause. The request will usually be made on the grounds that the jurors cannot be impartial due to their life experiences, because they know a party in the case, or for some other reason considered sufficient by the judge. There is, however, a fixed number of peremptory strikes each side is allowed. A peremptory strike means that the attorney does not have to state a reason to excuse a potential juror. It could be simply a hunch or a feeling that causes the attorney to believe a particular person may not act favorably to his or her client. But an attorney may not use a peremptory strike to exclude a juror based on race or gender. The attorneys kept looking at me the whole time, then they would look down, write notes. You kept wondering what they were thinking the whole time and it made you feel pretty uncomfortable. You may be excused at this stage of the trial. Do not take your dismissal personally, as there are many reasons a person is not selected to sit in a particular case. You have already performed a valuable service just by being present and participating in the selection process. Once the jury has been selected, the attorneys will present their opening statements. An opening statement is an overview of the case that the lawyer intends to prove and is not to be considered as evidence. After opening statements, each side will have the opportunity to provide evidence to support its case. Evidence may consist of witness testimony, documents, articles, photographs, weapons, or just about anything pertaining to the case. The judge may permit you to take notes during the trial. If you are allowed to do so, make sure your note-taking does not distract you from following the trial. The notes will be collected at the end of each day and at the end of the trial. The notes can be used to refresh your memory later, but you should not share your notes with other jurors or anyone else. Once a lawyer has finished the direct questioning of a witness, the opposing lawyer will have the opportunity to cross-examine that witness. After the plaintiff in a civil case or the prosecutor in a criminal case is finished presenting evidence, that party will tell the judge that side rests its case. The defense is then given the opportunity but is not required to present evidence. Trials are conducted according to rules, and objections are made to ensure the rules are followed. 
Occasionally, you may hear a lawyer object to a certain question asked of a witness or to certain evidence that is presented. Well, again, Your Honor, I object because inferences can be drawn by the jury, not by Mr. Sachs. I'm going to allow you. If the judge concludes the question should be allowed, the judge will overrule the objection. Objection overruled. And the witness will be allowed to answer the question. However, if the judge agrees with the objection, the objection will be sustained, which means the jury will not be permitted to hear an answer to the question. From time to time during a trial, the attorneys may request a bench conference so they can discuss with the judge various legal issues, such as whether certain evidence may be admitted. The jury may even be asked to leave the courtroom for a period of time so that the judge may discuss a matter in private with counsel. This may be frustrating to you, but it's important that you, the juror, only hear the evidence that the law allows to be presented in a case. Remember, whenever you are recessed from the courtroom for lunch, a break, or overnight, you are not allowed to discuss the case with anyone, including your family, friends, or fellow jurors. Well, it's really seemed very strange to me, because when I get home at night, usually my wife and I discuss just about everything that happened during the day, but they told us we can't discuss the case at all. During your service as a juror in a trial, avoid newspapers, television, and news programming that could include a story about the trial in which you are sitting as a juror. Do not do any independent research on the case. You are only allowed to consider the facts as presented to you in the courtroom. If anyone tries to discuss the case with you, notify the judge immediately. After both sides have finished presenting their evidence, the judge will instruct the jury. The judge's instructions are the law of the case, and you must follow them during deliberations. After the instructions are given, each side will present closing arguments. Closing arguments sum up each side's case and give the reasons why the jury should decide in favor of that side. Like opening statements, the closing arguments are not to be considered as evidence. After the closing arguments, the jury will begin deliberation in the jury room. In the jury room, the jurors should elect a foreman or forewoman to lead the deliberation. That person is responsible for maintaining order during deliberations. At this point, the case is in the jury's hands for decision. If you have a question, the forewoman or foreman should write it down and give it to the bailiff, who will take it to the judge. During deliberations, speak freely and keep an open mind. Listen to the opinions and points of views of the other jurors, but make your own decision. Were the witnesses credible? Was the evidence convincing? I believed the witness. I thought he was telling the truth. I believed him too. I felt like he was very competent. He seemed to know exactly what he was talking about. It's and really hard. Everybody brought up a good point. After a full discussion of the issues, you will each need to state your decision. If you do not agree with your fellow jurors, you may continue to discuss the case. In both criminal and civil cases, a jury's decision must be unanimous. A civil case generally must be proven by the greater weight of the evidence. In contrast, a criminal case must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. When the jury has reached its unanimous verdict, the foreman or forewoman must sign the verdict form and notify the bailiff. The bailiff will alert the judge and all parties will be summoned back into court. Ladies and gentlemen, have you reached a verdict? Would you please give your verdict to the bailiff? Mr. Morris, would you please stand? We the jury find it depending. After the verdict is announced, the lawyers may ask the judge to question the jurors individually to confirm that the verdict is accurate. This is called polling the jury. The judge will then dismiss the jury and you will be free to leave and to discuss the case with anyone. Once again, thank you very much for your service as a juror. Your participation is essential to ensure that every Virginian is accorded the right to a trial by a fair and impartial jury. I am confident that you will perform your duties with the utmost care. On behalf of all Virginians, I thank you for your service and I wish you God's greatest blessings. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>